consequences of that. It tells us what to do and the benefit to be gained thereby. And it gives us a troubleshooting guide. In other words, it tells us how to sort ourselves out if we have a problem, how to correct our deficiencies and guide ourselves aright. Now, if you meet the specifications of what your duties are, you will reap the reward. And if you are an employee who is substandard, what happens to you? You get fired. Think about that word, fired. The consequence of underperforming, the consequence of not meeting standards. That word did not come from nowhere. In the past, the people who were developing the English language looked around and said, how should we describe somebody who is a failure? What happens to them? In the same way that a person who is a failure in life finds the fire in the hereafter, the employee who is a failure on his job gets fired. So let us not be failures in life, and let us not be failures in the hereafter. So, hopefully by this point, we have agreed that as we are creation, there is a creator. That as everything we make for the purpose of serving us, our creator made us to serve and worship him. We are then talking about how. The owner's manual, the manual of specification for us is the manual of revelation. Why? What is the need for revelation? Isn't it enough for all of us just to be good? Now, all of you know I am not dreaming up these questions by myself. All of you have heard other people asking these questions. Yeah, sure, I believe there's a God. Yeah, okay, I, I know I believe there's a God, and I know I should be serving and worshiping him, but it's enough just to be good. I'm a good person, that's enough. So isn't that enough? The answer is no, it's not enough. Why? Well, to begin with, we have to examine the reason for revelation. Our creator is fair and just. Our creator is fair and just. When we die, we are going to the day of judgment where we are going to be evaluated and assigned either to punishment or to paradise. Would it be fair for that assignment to be arbitrary. We are going to stand in front of a court. Think about a court for a minute. To establish justice, you need four things. You need a judge, you need a court, you need witnesses, and you need a book of laws. If you do not have any of those four things, how can you establish justice? And on the day of judgment, the judge will be Allah, the book of laws will be the Holy Quran, and the witnesses will be the elements of creation, and the court will be the day of judgment. Now, it is by those four things that we will be measured. The angels who are in attendance with us from the day we are born until the day we die, will bear witness. Our own hands will bear witness to what they have wrought. Our own tongues will say what has passed through it. We will bear witnesses against ourselves. The angels will bear witnesses as well. Other elements of creation who have witnessed our deeds will be there as well, and there will be no deed, large or small, that will be missed. Those will be our witnesses in the courtroom of the Day of Judgment. And we will be measured by what? By a book of laws. And we will be judged by who? By Allah. Now, if Allah did not have that book of laws, would he be establishing justice? No. If we were assigned a place in, in the hereafter without having a chance to guide ourselves aright in this life, then that would be injustice. The same as you, if you went to a court here and they 
They either let you go or put you in prison based on nothing, as if the country had no laws. So how do you know what is right and what is wrong? Now, why else do we need revelation? Back to the question, isn't it enough just to be good? What is good? What is good? Good is defined by our creator, not by us. Go and gather a hundred different people together and ask them what is good to you and you will get many different answers. Obviously, there are criminals out there. There are criminals out there who enjoy being criminals. They enjoy certain crimes. And for them, that is good. There are tyrannical leaders throughout history who have led their entire populations to destruction. Men like Pharaoh, military leaders who have led their people and their armies and their countries to destruction on the basis of misguidance because they set the rules for themselves instead of accepting the guidance of our Creator. Mankind cannot agree on social justice, economics, politics, laws. We cannot agree. So what is good if not what is defined by our Creator? It is interesting that it is in the field of religion that mankind presumes to write its own rules. How many people here, I want you to raise your hands, how many people here entered your job, walked up to your boss, and said, thank you for the job, but you know what? I'm going to write my own job description. I'm going to write the, my own rules. I am going to dictate to you what I'm going to do, and then you've got to pay me. I don't see any hands up. There's a reason for that. I asked my father this. My father is not a Muslim. May Allah guide him. I was talking to him and I said, Dad, imagine that when I was a child, imagine that I came home one day and I said to you, Dad, you know, I recognize your existence and I thank you for everything that you've done for me, but you know, I've decided to rewrite the rules of the household. From now on, we're going to do things my way and you're going to like it. I said, now, Dad, what, what would you say to me if I did that? And he said, son, I'd tell you to go to hell. Think about it. Now, that is a very human response, but that is expected to be Allah's response. Those of us who presume to write our own religion, to set our own rules, to do what we feel we want to do, we are following nothing but our own desires. And that is not the example of the righteous, that is not the example of the pious throughout time.